scientific data isn't necessary to, to study this. It's important to know. Well, I, ju I just keep coming back to that old question. Why the hell can't we all just get along? <laughs> we don't really know good luck yeah. Either. Well, well it, I hear you. <laughs> yeah. I, I think this is a fairly optimistic view if you look at the distributions have changed um, and they've changed toward a getting along mentality. Absolutely. Uh, and, and the law has to uh, regarding this issue. Uh, but relevance is more relevant politically. Uh, and politics changes a lot. But this issue has been uh, fairly high on the agenda for years. Can candidates talk about it? And they're not talking about it now. Um, I think I actually think both candidates might agree on this one. But, um, there was a pretty big division between parties about this. I showed in that distribution. It's not. It's still there. And as you said, the the right, in particular, the religious right, an important faction within the Republican Party, uh, I do not agree with this at all. Uh, the attribution itself. Uh, and so it's it's more important politically, and um, regardless of the facts, regardless of the science, and. Um, it first came to our attention, like uh, I put on here, because it was in an actual question asked in a presidential debate. And it hadn't risen to that level before. The fact that it got there is pretty interesting. Uh, even, even in the case of science, it's not clear. So um, what I've learned by studying public opinion long enough is um, people don't pay attention to the facts. Uh, they pay more attention to how they feel the emotion, who their party is, who they belong to, and groups, what groups think, and who, what, what group it, are they it's part official of. official because Leonard Pitts say we, we are now living in post-factual America. Yes, yes. I, yeah. You know, I think if we had as much science and data as we have today, 100 years ago, we'd have still been post-factual. Exactly. It's yeah. just, we just clearly, our brains haven't changed in terms exactly. of how we approach inconsistent information. But one thing that is clearly creating more polarization on this and your ability to reject facts is the kind of bubble people live in with the new devices that they have. And the, if you search the internet, the internet picks up on what you like and it gives you back only the things you search and what you like. So it's just like talking to the neighbor who thinks just like you. You never talk to other people of different views. Right. And the algorithms are created, Google's over and over and over. That's the new thing. That's the last 20, 30 years. And You're that, really giving me great evidence for something I've long known. They have found the missing link between Neanderthal man and civilized man. <laughs> it's us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that's, that's good. Um, but uh, what? I, I'm pretty pessimistic about the new technology and what it's done to people and how, how they search and what they're exposed to. We're just not exposed to alternative views often. A university should be a great place for this, right? right? But the kids are they're looking at their uh, cell phones and that's, they're getting generated news if they're even watching the news. And it's what they already like. They're writing papers off the Google. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's, so the technology's created more information but more um, information that, that you select. Right. and continue to select the same type over and over. Yeah. You know, as far as the nature versus nurture goes, mm -hmm. regardless of which actually holds more sway, but in terms of the attribution, it just seems like, it's, you know, it seems like it swings back and forth as far as which one's more popular. I just keep coming back to the extreme of either one. Can, can it, I just, that lack of balance, mm -hmm. I think it can allow for some pretty draconian uh, measures to arise if it's all environment or all genetic. And at a personal level, too, I, I need to believe that somewhere in the middle, uh, like you said, some of those things on genetic ideology, I, I've read some brain books, too, that make it sound like you have no free will whatsoever because this right. stuff's hardwired from a millennia ago. I can't believe that. Right. That it is troubling when you think about it that way, right? That some agency should be involved in terms of human agency, that, that some some choice would be yeah. there. And But on the other end, it, it, there's got to be some genetically uh, 
predis predisposition, yeah. if you will. But I, I, my guess is uh, that there's, like many things, it's interaction, okay. right? That there's interactions. I, and think this, I think this at least gets clearer, going back to my point, that you, you reserve that genetic question to orientation as opposed to genera generalizing from, from genetics to the massive complexity of behavior. That's almost a different question. Yes. They're, they're, they're two different questions. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I agree. And I had that distinction I hadn't thought about as much until you just brought it up a few minutes ago. It's a good one. Yes. Before today, I thought there was some sort of a marker that uh, scientifically proved someone was either homosexual or no. Or, and. Uh, uh, anyway, I'm, I'm really glad you came today. <laughs> but where will the evidence come from if it ever comes? I think from that, that study you're referring to is the early 90s. They, they thought there was a gay gene, but it, it, as Dennis just pointed out, it, it wasn't all that clear. Uh, I would think it would come from biologists and genetics yep. uh, of the field which I'm not familiar with, but I know it's very complex and a lot more advanced than it was in 2003. And um, I, I wish I knew more about that, but I think that's where it's going to come from. from Same here. Genetics. Yeah, genetics. I think, I think when, when people ask me what causes homosexuality, my answer always is I have absolutely no idea. And the next question is, well, would you take any bets on a particular direction? And I, my bet is that somewhere 20, 30 years from now, or sooner, I don't know, at some extraordinarily subtle level of genetics, biology and genetics, we may find some partial answer to right. what causes someone to be heterosexual. I think it's a good way of thinking about it as partial answer. I've never seen a clean answer. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You see kind of maybe probabilities, but be a clean answer. right. I haven't seen a clean answer. Although you know, just, they, they know that certain genes you, you predispose you to certain diseases, but it's a probabilistic answer, well, right? The other issue about genetics is we should be just as interested in what the hell causes heterosexuality as we yeah, should yeah, what exactly. causes Nobody looks at it, right? And, yeah. sure. and the politics of that distinction is kind of interesting. Because mm -hmm. Most people believe that you can fix, if you can find a cause of homosexuality, you can fix it. Right. Which is... Right. Well, it's, it's uh, still considered the anomaly, so they want to look at yeah. the outlier, but yeah. Well, the more interesting question is why do we all want to be so certain about everything. You know, we can't get to the heart of almost anything, really. True. So that's why that's why we have people like you. And, 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 stuff on and I'm right <laughs> back to wondering why we just can't get along. <laughs> and he's a minister. That's the difference. Mark, thank you so okay, much. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah, appreciate it. Yeah. I guess that's just you already, you already, you already, Yeah, I got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.